Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason Shepard here, checking in on you, the Remote Pilot 101 family, and our community. With the coronavirus affecting our lives unexpectedly, and certainly with a quickness, we here in the Remote Pilot 101 studio thought it was important to discuss this pandemic's effect on both the remote pilot industry and some best practices as we as pilots uh, work to prioritize safety ultimately above all else. Let's be honest, it's hard to stay positive in the face of this scary situation. And concern for our loved ones is an obvious priority. That being said, it's important to make note of all the contributions and innovations drone pilots are making in face of these new obstacles. People are stepping up literally all over the world and you, the remote pilots, should be most proud. Coronavirus is contagious and difficult to corral, which means across the globe, it's becoming safer to conduct traditional human-to-human -human interactions, well, remotely. In a province in China, protective suit-clad volunteers are actually using unmanned aerial vehicles to spray common surfaces with disinfectant, while others are examining geothermal imagery to assess areas of concern. In Spain, police officials are finding speaker-equipped drones to be quite useful in communicating information while others track infected patients uh, protecting quarantine zone borders. Here at Remote Pilot 101, you know, we fly the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Edition, which has that handy mounted speaker as one of its uh, accessories, and that is always an asset to us in our drone fleet. There's also a Chinese company called Antwerp Technology, and they're using drones in cooperation with an unmanned station to ensure medical samples and quarantine materials in China can travel between hospitals and disease control centers with thus minimizing the risk of human interaction. This all illustrates the innovative and exciting ways world governments are integrating drones and these technologies into everyday lives and into this recovery process. This, of course, means expanded opportunities to assist and grow business in the future, and I see that as promising and optimistic here. We're always focused on safety here at RemotePilot101.com, and I absolutely know you are too. You wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't. So of course, we are encouraging our remote pilots to know and respect the CDC and WHO guidelines as just as we would the FAA and respect their guidelines. But what does that look like on a practical level for us as remote pilots? It's things like communication over email and phone. It means no shaking hands with the client. In fact, it means actually eliminating site visits for non-essential project members completely. It's keeping those teams that you're flying with slim, but as slim as safety and mission will certainly allow. That stated, respecting those recommended distances while also maintaining communication is still key. We know as you do, the goal is still safe flying while also maintaining our business volume. To that end, here are some more specific things you can do as the remote pilot in command. Equipment maintenance is more critical now than ever. Think about it this way. Assuming we must pass systems or controllers or accessories, etc., kind of back and forth, we must stay vigilant. What are some best practices to remember? For starters, let's not share comms. Let's not share radios. Each team member needs to mark, retain, and then clean his or her own radio. This way, our visual observers can keep us out of the trees and we don't have to worry about if their mic has been contaminated, right? Now, there are going to be instances where equipment must be passed from hand to hand. It's all but unavoidable. So for items that must be shared, we are able to, let's get that gear cleaned as soon as possible, just as we would encounter with another tool uh, in our workspace. Uh, a spray bottle filled with one part water, one part rubbing alcohol is ideal for consumer cleaning of electronics to include our equipment. Avoid our camera lenses, of course, but the solution applied to a washcloth and then wiped across a drone's topical surfaces, it's gonna dry quickly and kill large swaths of otherwise harmful bacteria. Listen, it is inevitable that folks will struggle to retain clientele. 
to complete projects during a pandemic of this type. There will be setbacks, there will be cancellations and restrictions. We, uh, the Remote Pilot 101 team and family, we are truly here to support you as these situations arise. We're gonna keep you educated and informed abreast of any new recommendations. Listen when we say this. Your health uh, and that of those around you is truly what's most important to us, the Remote Pilot 101 family. Just remember though, in a time like this, Remote pilots are lucky in so far as that with the right care and preparation, the nature of this work can be just that, remote. Stay safe and let us know your best tips for working safely in these very different times as a Part 107 operator in the Remote Pilot 101 comments on Facebook, on YouTube, and of course, remotepilot101.com. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time for another SUAS update.